Welcome, welcome, welcome to day eight. We have been on this journey together for a little over a week, and <clears throat> I can honestly say that I think we've introduced some new concepts, some new techniques, some new practices for you to incorporate into your already existing meditation practice, or even to elevate a brand new meditation practice. Today's intention is the mudra, or the hand posture. Most of you, when you imagine someone meditating, you probably have something in mind as to like what their body looks like, what their hands look like. You may have seen people holding their hands like this and ohming it, ohming it out into a meditative space. A mudra is another way that you can deepen the physical sensations in the body for your meditation practice. A mudra is a very mindful position of the hands, typically, or somewhere the hands and the body together that you create in order for you to deepen your practice. So there's different kinds of mudras that have different types of benefits. And the mudra that we're going to focus on today are basically four variations of what's called the gyan mudra. And the gyan mudra is for the Sanskrit word that represents wisdom divine wisdom and mindfulness. So a lot of times when you see someone sitting in meditation, you'll see their index finger and their thumb are just gently pressed together with the three remaining fingers just parallel next to one another, okay? So when you're thinking of sitting in meditation, you think of your body being in a particular posture, you're actually bringing your mind into a particular state of being or thinking, and the hands are something that sometimes just relax in the lap. Sometimes they end up face down on the knees. Sometimes they're together at the heart. Wherever you find your hands naturally falling, that's usually once you've started to relax or settle into that meditative space. Sometimes when the mind is particularly active, bringing the hands into a mudra can help create another dristi or another focal point for your thoughts which can help to ground you and get you into that meditative groove because of course the goal is to go from ah world state to hmm, meditative state right but there are some steps we have to take to get from point a to point b to point c to point quiet <laughs> so i'm going to show you just four simple variations of the gyan mudra the first one is called the abaha mudra now keep in mind, a lot of these Sanskrit words might be brand new. You might be hearing them for the very first time, but I will include a graphic in this particular email so you can see what these actual words look like and how they're spelled. So the Abhaha Mudra, you're going to have the dominant hand or both hands actually, but starting with the dominant hand and you're just gonna slightly bend the thumb and just tuck it just below that little digit below the forefinger. The Abhaha Mudra is a mudra that represents fearlessness. So I like to imagine this like a big old stop sign that's like, nope, fear, get out of here. <laughs> There's no room for you. So when you imagine yourself getting into a meditative space, you may have both hands in the Abhaha Mudra, which you're essentially pressing away from the body, pressing away any negative energy, pressing away any negative thoughts, any negative memories that no longer serve you. And you're taking a stand against fear and you're embracing a sense of fearlessness okay the next variation is the pernagyan and the pernagyan is going to bring the index and the thumb together we're going to bring all of the three fingers together nice and parallel and we're going to place that right at the heart center so the lower knuckle of the thumb is going to press right by the sternum not hard but just enough for you to know that it's present there and the left hand, or the non-dominant hand, can be doing the Gyan Mudra traditionally, which is just the index and the thumb together, and you can place that down just above the left knee. This is the Purna Mudra. This mudra is to align and attract and create space for a sensation of full and divine wisdom. Wisdom going directly into the heart and wisdom also going out into the world. So this is the Purna Mudra. 
The next one is called the Gyan Varibraha Mudra. And this is the mudra that represents a sense of detachment. So this is where both the right and left thumb and index finger come together, kind of like an okay sign, but it's tucked in just a bit. So the three fingers are parallel next to each other. And then both hands will just be placed just at the top of the knees, sitting up nice and tall. And this is our Gyan Vaigraha Mudra, which is the detachment gesture. So this is where we go when we're getting pretty close to starting to settle in to our breath, settle in to our body, and start to bring ourselves into that meditative state. And the last one is the, called the Dhyan Gyan Mudra. And this is a meditation gesture. And what this looks like is just the left hand cupped just below the right hand, and the two thumbs are just gonna gently press together. So it's not like you're making a bird. <laughs> you're just pressing them together and then they just sit just below the navel, sitting up nice and tall. And this is the Dhyan Gyan Mudra. And this is our meditation mudra. This is where we are settled in and we're ready to just meditate it on out. So we'll go over those again. At the beginning is the Abaha Mudra. This is our fearlessness mudra. Get out of here, fear. The Purna Gyan, which is the Gyan Mudra, press just against the heart. The Gyan Varigraha, which is both hands in Gyan Mudra. The detachment gesture just at the tops of the knees is where the hands will rest. And the Gyan Gyan Mudra, which is our meditation gesture. So as you practice different types of mudras, you might notice different sensations in the body, different thoughts in the mind that come up. So today, as you go into your meditation practice, I encourage you to try one of these four mudras and just see how it feels to hold that for the duration of your practice. So I'll guide us in a brief meditation before we head out for the rest of your day and you have a chance to sit with this lesson and explore it a little bit longer. So if you haven't already, go ahead and find your comfortable seat. And why don't we start with the Abaha Mudra. So that's again, the hand is pressed out, fingertips are welded together in a sense. Bend the thumb and just tuck it just below the index finger. And while we go ahead and place the other hand just over the heart. So we're holding our heart center we're pressing away anything that no longer serves. And let's just try taking five deep cycles of breath here. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the mouth. As you continue with more cycles of breath, imagine inviting in goodness, protection, and as you press the hand away from the body, visualize the remover of all obstacles, the remover of all fear, away from and around you. Take two more breaths if you have not already. And then go ahead and relax the hand. And as the hands rest at just the tops of the knees, go ahead and bring the index finger and the thumb together on both hands, coming into Gyan Mudra. Starting to bring the body into a still place. And imagine yourself tapping into your highest source of wisdom. This may be in your mind, this may be in your heart, your highest source of wisdom. Allow yourself to breathe into that space. Begin to deepen the inhale and lengthen the exhale. Giving yourself permission to be present 
to be experienced. Begin to take notice of any small and subtle sensations in the body. As you maintain the intention of the mudra, the positioning of the hands and fingers, noticing any sensations in the body that you feel simply by changing the position of the hands and fingers. Taking a deep breath in here and bringing the palms together into Dhyan Mudra, letting the right hand just rest gently in the left, softly pressing the thumbs together. Taking a deep inhale here. followed by a long and steady exhale. Taking three more deep breaths in and long breaths out. Then bringing the hands together at the heart, bowing the head to the heart. as you honor yourself for showing up, for trying something different and creating something new. I honor each of you and thank you for allowing me to continue to be your guide and share this beautiful practice with you. As always, I proclaim peace, prosperity, and pure joy over your life as I do mine. Namaste. Peace, y'all. See you tomorrow.